In this video, Emoji Shooter Part 1, we are going to create an emoji grid and use the accelerometer to control a spaceship. This game is going to feature a grid of emojis at the top. So let's create them now. I'm going to write some code in the setup method that's going to draw a grid of emojis. These two for loops make rows and columns of emojis. We're going to have four rows and 12 columns. Now we need to create a sprite node and we need to choose one of the emojis out of the images list. Now we need to set the position of the new emoji. That's where all of the different emojis are going to have a different position. So we need to base our position on the X and the Y that we're looping through here and here. I'm going to start off by taking whatever the value of X is and multiplying it by 80. That's going to give us our spacing. Then I'm going to take the Y and I'm going to multiply it by 80. That's going to give us our vertical spacing. Finally, I'll run self.addChild to add it to the screen. Now we have some money on the screen. It's just not quite in the right spot. To get it in the right spot, you need to use trial and error. I'm just going to add 64 shift them all to the right and I'm going to add 470 and shift all of the notes up the screen. Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is make an emoji list. This is going to come in handy for the collision detection later on. We're going to create an empty list called self.emojis. And then just after they've been added to the screen, we also need to append our new emojis to the self.emojis list. And to do that, we use the append method. I don't always want to shoot at banknotes. So we're going to create a new list of emoji images. You notice I'm not using self dot. That's because I don't need to actually use the emoji image list further down in my code. I only need to access the emoji image list within the setup method. To create an empty list, you need to use a set of square brackets. We actually want to put some things into our list. I'm going to add in some images. In this line of code here, when we're creating the sprite node, I want to select a random emoji out of the list. To do that, I'm going to use random.choice. With random.choice, I need to supply the list that I need to choose from as the argument. So I need to write emoji image list in here. Now when I run it, I should get a whole bunch of random emojis drawn to the screen.
Now I need to draw the spaceship. The spaceship is going to be created also in the setup method. You just need to make sure that you're at the correct indentation level. I'm going to call my sprite node self.spaceship. That's because I need to use self.spaceship in other methods such as update. I'm going to use an image out of the space shooter art folder and I'm going to choose enemy blue number three. Now I need to set the position of the spaceship. I'm going to set it to 512 and 70. Finally, I need to use self.addChild to add the spaceship to the screen. Finally, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the accelerometer to control the movement of your spaceship. In the update method, similar to how we've done the buttons, we want to be getting the accelerometer data every single frame and then moving the spaceship to the left or to the right. To do that, we need to calculate a new value for the X. The new value for the X needs to be based on the old position of the spaceship. And we actually need to subtract the gravity function using the Y component. And we need to multiply it by 30. The reason why we need to use the dot y component of gravity is because in landscape mode the left and right movement is best controlled by the y component of gravity. Finally we need to set the spaceship's position. We're going to set it to the new x and 70 for the Y. Tilt your iPad to the left and to the right and watch your spaceship move. There is just one problem though. The spaceship is going to go off the screen. To change that, we need to use an if statement. I'm going to write the if statement right here. We're going to make sure that the new X is greater than or equal to zero and also the new x is less than or equal to 1024. If it matches both of those conditions, then we're allowed to move. As you can see, we're stopping at the zero point and the 1024 point. 